Hey everyone, Dr. Ron Bio again here for another edition of Homework Helper to help you understand uh, gene expression a little better. In this particular screencast, we want to emphasize the ribosome and its role in translation. But even more, we want to emphasize the relationship between messenger RNA and tRNA in that ribosome as you're going from the message in RNA, messenger RNA, and how tRNA is useful in producing that string of amino acids in your protein. Okay, so for starters, let's look at the structure of the ribosome. Uh, there are two structures, uh, two subunits in the ribosome that I want to draw your attention to, the large subunit and the small subunit. Uh, basically, the ribosome is a cell structure. It's composed of uh, ribosomal RNA uh, proteins that come together to facilitate translation. So if you look back at the other screencast when we talk about translation, going from messenger RNA to proteins, uh, this is happening at the ribosome. Ribosome can be in two places. It can be in the cytoplasm, or it could also be on the ER. So when your teacher says rough ER, those are ribosomes that are on the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so that's the structure of the ribosome and why that's important. But really what I want to talk about here is this interaction of two very important RNA molecules in the ribosome. Okay, so we want to discuss here the tRNA and the messenger RNA and how they interact to facilitate the formation of a protein. So you can see here we have a growing protein in the ribosome. And really what we want to try to do in the ribosome is link together this circular amino acid and this square amino acid uh, and form what we call a peptide bond here. So we're doing this to form a peptide bond. Uh, and really what is going to happen is the messenger RNA and the tRNA are going to interact, temporarily dock together to facilitate the formation of this peptide bond and put the correct amino acid in the proper place on the growing protein, okay? So there's a really important relationship that you need to understand here, that uh, the relationship between messenger RNA and tRNA. And to use more specific language, it's the interaction between the nucleotides in the messenger RNA codon and it's the interaction between the RNA nucleotides in the anti-codon of this tRNA molecule. Okay, so we're gonna go through some examples of this to show you specifically what I mean. But if you take a look at this picture here uh, of a ribosome performing translation in gene expression, you'll see this tRNA molecule here and this tRNA molecule here. Uh, there is a interaction between the blue anti-codons of tRNA and the red codons of messenger RNA in this ribosome. So when we take a closer look, if you follow this green circle up here, you're going to see that there's reverse complementation. So there's complementary RNA nucleotides bonding together. So it's temporarily docking tRNA to messenger RNA, okay? So if your codon sequence was CGA, so if we had C in this first position of the codon, G in the second position, and A in the third position, we would bring tRNA that had reverse complementary RNA nucleotides, so in this case G, in this case C, and in this case U, that brings the anticodon of the tRNA to the codon of the messenger RNA to allow them to temporarily be there to bond together to amino acids. So hopefully this will make sense at the, at the end here as we go through some examples. Okay, so let's take a look at few, a few examples here. Um, you will need a genetic code table for this, so open your textbook to a genetic code table or pull out the uh, page that your teacher most likely gave you for the genetic code table. I wanna make a quick uh, important point here though, and that point is, uh, you always, always, always use messenger RNA to determine the amino acid that's being added to the growing protein, okay? So when you look at your genetic code table, you will always use messenger RNA to determine 
the amino acid on that genetic code table. You never use the tRNA anticodon. Okay? So you will never use this to determine amino acid, okay? Keep that in mind. And that should make sense because where did you get your messenger RNA from in the process of transcription? Well, if you remember, you got it from your DNA in the nucleus. So basically, we're using the code of the DNA to produce a messenger RNA that will be used to make an amino acid in translation. Please, never use your tRNA sequence to determine an amino acid. And that's sort of an advanced topic. A lot of teachers don't discuss the interaction between tRNA and messenger RNA. Um, it's a little more of an advanced topic, but I think it's important to fully understand the process. So let's take a look at an example here. So messenger RNA and tRNA interactions at a basic level. So if I give you the following messenger RNA transcript, ACA, UGG, CGA, GGU, you could determine the anticodon sequence of the tRNA that will bring the appropriate amino acid by reverse complementation. So if you look here and you see an A, well, that's going to complement in RNA language, so using RNA nucleotides to a U. So you'll get a temporarily, temporary bond between those. Uh, here you would have a G. Here another U. Here an A. C, C, G, C, U, C, C, A. So these are all anti-codons. Now remember, which of the two do you use to determine the amino acid that will be added to the protein during translation? Always, always, always messenger RNA. So let's take this another step further and determine the amino acid that will be brought by the tRNA, but that is encoded by the messenger RNA. So take out your genetic code table and tell me what ACA encodes. So if you look at your genetic code table, ACA is going to bring a threonine, which is single letter abbreviation of T. If you look at uh, the messenger RNA for UGG, what will UGG bring you? That's a tryptophan. Okay, so you see we're going through and we're um, basically doing translation using that messenger RNA, okay? What will CGA bring? CGA, according to my table, will bring an arginine, okay? What will GGU bring? GGU will bring, GGU will bring uh, glycine, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, when we use messenger RNA to determine our amino acids, that's translation, but understanding that the opposite base for, for RNA will be the, uh, tRNA, the tRNA anticodon that temporarily docks. So again, we'll do this in another example, but never use tRNA to determine your amino acid. Always use your messenger RNA. Let's take a look at this from a different perspective. Uh, this relationship between messenger RNA and tRNA part two. If we have tRNA, you can reverse complement to tell me the messenger RNA transcript, the messenger RNA codons uh, that it will interact with. So here, if we're looking here, that's a G, 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 U, G, U, C, C, U, A, U, G. Now we use these codons to determine the amino acids. Okay, so we got four codons here. What are the amino acids? Well, I'm looking at my genetic code table, G, G, G. That's a glycine, single letter abbreviation G. U, G, U. U, G, U is a cysteine. C, C, U. C, C, U is proline. And A, U, G is methionine, single letter abbreviation M. Okay? So I hope this makes sense. We're trying to emphasize the idea that this anti-codon codon relationship is what brings the appropriate amino acid and, and allows that tRNA to dock. But keep in mind, you always use your messenger RNA to determine that amino acid. Let's take a look at another example, part three. So here I have three amino acids. 
you should be able to go two steps backwards and tell me what the tRNA is that brought this amino acid. So uh, these first two, methionine and tryptophan, are pretty simple because there's only one codon that brings them. So let's go ahead and lay those out. The codon that brings methionine is AUG. The codon that brings tryptophan is UGG. Now, serine, we run into an interesting uh, problem uh, because serine can be coded for by six different codons. Okay, so if I'm looking at my genetic code table, uh, there are two that are A, G, U, and A, G, C. The other codons that can bring serine is U, C, anything. Okay, so anything in that third position there will bring um, a serine. Okay, now if we're taking another step backwards, tell me the anti-codon on the tRNA that brings methionine. The way that you do that, reverse complementation. So A would pair with U, U would pair with A, G would pair with C. So this is the anti-codon of the tRNA that's bringing methionine. Okay, so I, I hope that helps and, and have, helps you to understand the relationship a little better. So UGG, what would that be? That would be ACC. So the tRNA anti-codon that's bringing tryptophan is ACC. Now we have all these possibilities for serine. I'll do one for you. It could be possible that serine is bringing, um, the tRNA that's bringing serine is UCA, but could also be comp reverse complementary for all these other codons as well, okay? So that's going to do it for me. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, make sure to check back for other videos that might be helpful in your studies of gene expression, okay? Talk to you soon.